Yeah, so welcome back again to the intermediate series of OpenFoam. We just did a GitHub upload in the last video, and we're looking at uh, Snappy X Mesh. We have already done uh, sort of a sort of the optimization, so so to speak, and we are. It seems quite satisfactory the mesh that was generated. The, the edges seem to be fine. Not too many defects. Yeah, we'll make do with it. So, and we know how to refine it. We can actually refine by region, by box, and even use this uh, uh, internal um, implicit uh, feature snap, which will help us deal with the edges. So that that's very helpful. So we'll just uh, go through again the Snappy X Mesh Dict. All right. So this is the shape we are importing. Cylinder.stl and the refinement parameters we can just leave it but what's very important is that you know the refinement surfaces and what these levels mean the minimum and maximum level and then this implicit feature snap is very 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 important in order to get the corners right and not have them in a very funny shape so all this is uploaded on github so I'm just going to delete the old file okay so let's go to the github since this is one successful one. okay uh, so next step we want to take a look at uh, what uh, boundaries there are for that we can look at the constant folder we look at the poly mesh all right we look at the boundary oh sorry vi boundary and you look normally uh, we want to have multiple uh, boundaries so to speak we only have one inlet maybe the other side is an outlet then this curved part will be our wall uh, and normally also when we import STL files they come in AC, AC, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it ASCII format which is something like he here They come in SC format, SCII format, and by then you'll be able to use the boundaries. Uh, you'll be able to define boundaries from there. However, uh, not all STL files are like that, and sometimes we will have to work with binary files as well. So, I mean, there are lots of guides that tell you how to define the face and the patch from AC, ASCII files. But uh, we'll work with binary files in which we can't do that, because if we try, if we try and uh, hmm, QA, yeah, if we try and take a look at uh, the tri surface file or VI tri surface uh, cylinder STL, we'll just look at this. It's a complete mess. Uh, we don't know what's going on, but that's fine. Um, We'll have to find some workarounds in order to define our boundary conditions properly. And for that, we'll need to start by splitting. Oops, wrong one. PI polymesh uh, boundary. We'll need to start splitting this, uh, this piece, this cylinder uh, boundary or the yeah, cylinder boundary up into segments. All right, we'll need to cut this up. And for that, we will need to do something called, use something called topo set. So, let's, uh, let me try and you know, uh, illustrate first. So, we'll go somewhere very familiar first. Right, the cavity folder. Form. So, we go to the cavity. Yeah, cavity, and you go to constant. And we go to polymesh and via boundary. Look at this. There are three faces in the cavity case. There's a moving wall, which is the top of the cavity. There are fixed walls, and then there's a front and back denoting that. Okay, this this is a a two D calculation. We don't want anything else. So ideally, in this uh, 
in this uh, 3D surface, you have to split up the faces, right? So if let's say there's a cube, okay, there's a cube here, or a cuboid, a 3D shape. Ideally, maybe the front face and the back face, the right and left, top and bottom, all these should be assigned, they, are, they should be grouped up differently. So based on the way that they are grouped up, based on the patches uh, that they have, they can be assigned boundary conditions. So ideally, we will want to have this as one face, this as another group of face, then the curve parts also as another group. And to do that, we need to select these cells or these faces. We need to select these faces specifically. We need to select these faces specifically and we need to select all the outside faces in the middle. All right. Um, now trouble with meshes is that trouble with meshes is that there are more than uh, not all faces are external externally facing. So you can imagine Let's say I draw this, this uh, box thingy here, right? Not all faces are uh, external. Yeah, so let's say I use purple. I say these are these are two cells, right? So this this uh, in this cell is actually an internal face. And if I use orange to coat maybe the top cells, this is an external face. Right, so we only want external faces to uh, group up to kind of uh, tell open form that okay, I only want to select these orange colored faces to denote one one set of boundaries. So what TopoSet does is that TopoSet will tell you okay, I can select these two cells, and I call it like uh, maybe a group one. Okay, I should use typing. We can select some of these faces and we make a face set. So we call this face set one. Maybe this right hand side, for example, we will just call this face set two. So what Topo set uh, helps us do is to uh, convert these groups of faces, the external ones especially, into face sets. Once once there are once we have face sets, we can actually then convert them into patches. Patches, right? So these patches are basically just uh, groups of cells that are uh, groups of faces that are ready to be assigned boundary conditions. So the third step after that is to just assign boundary conditions. Okay, so maybe this can be an outlet, and this can be like, for example, a wall. Okay, so this is how this is how the topo set is going to work. So topo set, all topo set is doing is converting this into face set. Okay, for patches we make create patch. And to assign boundary conditions that you should have known already in the in your basic uh, open form knowledge. So these two, topo set and create patch, are uh, what are the utilities we are going to uh, investigate next. So the what we use for topo set is topo set dict, and for create patch we use create patch dict, the dictionary. All right, so we'll go here. QA. So let's uh, see the form tutorials. And let's find in here topo set dict. Alright, so we have lots of topo set dicts here. Okay. So we're just going to copy one of them over. Okay, so there's pimple form. 
piezo foam, any of this. But we will need to learn what these entries are talking about. Because like <coughs> Snappy X Mesh Dick, Topo Sack Dick has yet another kind of uh, uh, thing for us to, yeah, it is it has its own language, it has its own uh, syntax for us to get familiar with. So let's uh, go to Pimple Foam. For example, this one. See the. Yeah, I'll go here. And let's see Toposetic. Okay, so we have we have this thing called actions and then there are some things that this topo set dick is doing okay we'll go through them slowly in the next few videos so uh, these are some of the things that we are going to look into but uh, for now I just want to introduce you to what what we're going to do in the next few videos look at topo set and then we want to create patches from them after that we can start assigning boundary conditions and we can start simulating the flow okay so thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video oh but okay actually might as well before before we go on to the next video we can copy this topo set dig over cp a r cp topo set dict and where do we go uh we want to go put in this uh, GitHub software. Hmm. Snappy pipe system. All right, so I just put all this GitHub software and Snappy pipe here. Snappy pipe system. I put a dot there. So cd to the snappy pipe and go to the system directory and there we have a topo set dict. Okay, so we just copy the topo set dict over. So these were our basic four that we have in our cavity file. These two pertain to snappy hex mesh. This one pertains to topo set. So with topo set we can start selecting cells and faces and start grouping them together and then create patches out of them. So I'm going to stop here. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.